and we welcome Paul Greendike uh, here at, well, two things, uh, TIA's uh, annual board meeting or one of their board meetings here at TIA headquarters and also here in our TIA Now studio. Of course, Paul is the Vice President of Mobile Core and Network Services at AT&T. Thanks for being with us. Great to be here. Thanks. Well, I want to ask you a number of questions about uh, AT&T's 5G roadmap, AT&T's 5G field trials. But I first want to ask you about your role at AT&T. You've been there for several decades. You have a very, and I call it a ubiquitous role at at and as far as yeah. building out network virtualization and, and mobile core. Can you briefly talk about that? Sure, sure. So my role, at, I'm, a, I'm responsible for our mobile core and network services development. So what that encompasses is Basically, AT&T's, anything that's not on the radio access side of mobility is, I'm responsible for its, for its development. So all the signaling and all of the uh, capabilities in the data centers and, and you know, getting the traffic to the internet, et cetera. I'm also responsible for the IMS core. So pretty much the rich communication services, all of the, all that, anything that's happening in a Volte call or a video call is all, all the function, all the uh, network uh, services and network functions are, uh, I'm responsible for the development and design of those. Now I mentioned AT&T's 5G roadmap. It really details um, sort of the dynamic or relationship between network virtualization and 5G related products and services. Um, can you talk about some of those roles that it plays? Certainly, uh, you know, network function virtualization really is front and center for 5G. So the role that I have on the core side is really why uh, so I'm kind of in the thick of virtualization uh, because the, the core is where it's easier to virtualize the network er, uh, earlier. Um, and when you virtualize, the, some of the benefits of virtualization for 5G is that you, don't, you won't need the rip and replace that you had with LTE, right? You used, you used to have to rip a network out and replace it. Well, you, you don't need to do that in a software-based network, right? You can spin up new software. Um, a virtualization in 5G will give us agility and efficiency, um, so we can very quickly spin up new services and new capabilities. Uh, virtualization will also be important for things like network slicing. Um, as you know, 5G encompasses a much greater suite of things uh, than, than 2G, 3G, 4G, and slicing will enable us to, to basically create different slices of network with different functions. Um, densification is a big, a big thing in 5G, and having a virtualized core allows us to distribute the core and spin up cores in different locations quickly. Um, and then uh, low latency is another attribute of 5G. Um, so having the footprint and having a distributed core that's uh, virtualized is, is, is key to that. Now, uh, Paul, I also mentioned a bit earlier about AT&T's 5G field trials. I believe there are some field trials that were launched in Austin, Texas this year. Is that correct? That's correct. We have actually trials in Austin and Middletown, New Jersey. We have trials uh, in um, in uh, San Ramon, California, um, so we, uh, and Atlanta, Georgia as well. Um, but we, we're doing a bunch of 5G trials. Right now, the focus is primarily on millimeter wave technology. Um, as you, you probably know, millimeter wave technology introduces lots of challenges, uh, very, very small wavelength, right? So, so what happens is uh, we need to study the effects of, of foliage on trees and weather, snow, rain, ice, uh, et cetera. So we're doing a bunch of environmental trials. Uh, we've already achieved uh, 14 gig, uh, gigabits per second speeds uh, in our trials. So trials are moving along very, very well. I want to talk about some other areas uh, that AT&T is working on with respect to 5G technologies. Um, you're working in your labs currently with Ericsson and Intel on some 5G uh, technologies, including um, the Internet of Things uh, and applications surrounding that, 4K video, virtual reality, robots, self-driving cars. Can you sort of touch on some of those? Sure. I mean, the, as I said, the, uh, the, the, the applications for 5G are rich and diverse. It's a really exciting time for our industry because it's not just about, it is about bigger, fatter pipes, about, you know, mobile broadband, but it's also about things like self-driving cars. I mean, imagine the latency requirements. You want to, if I'm getting in a car, I'm sure if you would as well, you want to make sure that that car, that the, the communications to that car are real time. There's no delay is acceptable. Um, so that's a different attribute of a core uh, and of a, of a mobile network than, than is typical. But then you have the other dimension, uh, the Internet of Things, where you have literally 
you know, tens of billions of things that will be connected to the internet with sometimes very, very thin requirements on the network. So that they need a different set of requirements from the this, from this same 5G network, right? So the, the, the requirements are very diverse. Um, and, that, and that's, so there's just a couple examples of the diversity of requirements uh, in 5G. Now in a, uh, 2016, and again, if I'm, uh, if I'm incorrect, let me know, AT&T made an announcement that they wanted 30% of their network functions to be virtualized. Number one, have you achieved that? And number two, how much of that is represented really in the mobile core? Well, first of all, so that, yeah, you're correct. That is the goal. Um, and the year's not over yet, so I can't say we've achieved it yet, but we will achieve it by the end of the year. We have uh, very good confidence we will. And I would say probably somewhere on the order of two-thirds of that 30% is in the mobile core. Uh, it's a very significant part of it. Uh, mobility is a great place to start this virtualization journey. Uh, the applications that were in today's mobile core are very compute and storage centric. They, they make sense to run on a virtualized network. And uh, there's great uh, economics and efficiencies to be gained from that. Paul, I want to finish by asking you, again, very briefly about um, AT&T possibly moving in uh, from the connectivity business and now into the content business. Can you touch on that? Well, you know, we've been moving in that direction for a while, right, with our acquisition of DirecTV. Um, it really makes sense, um, and we believe the combination of content and mobility makes gr a great amount of sense. Uh, if you look at, you know, where, where consumers are consuming content, it's increasingly on mobile devices. So we believe that the combination of, of, of owning and driving the content and allowing customers to view that content anywhere they like on any device, any place, uh, makes a lot of sense. So it, it seems uh, it's, a good, it's a great direction. I'm very excited for the future. All good discussion. Thanks for being with us. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.